Hello everybody, I am trying a different way of recording my video today. I'm doing this from my laptop instead of my phone, so uh, I uh, will see how this goes. I don't know if the quality will be the same or not, so uh, let me know in the comments if you notice anything different. Um, I just tried to do a live stream and my connection was really bad, so I apologize to everybody um, who was uh, in there. Um, I know it sucked, but thank you for sticking in there for a little bit and giving me some watch time. Um, I wanted to start off this video um, by saying uh, good job to my niece and nephew, uh, Olivia and Tristan. Uh, they went to a um, Taekwondo tournament in Las Vegas, Nevada. And while they did not medal, uh, they were in very competitive rings and they did an amazing job, my brother-in-law said. My sister couldn't go because uh, she was sick. And she was, well, and if she hadn't been sick, she would have come to the funeral for my grandma anyway. But um, I was going to just send a little video to um, put in a text to send to my brother-in-law and so they could see it. But my sister suggested putting it here on my YouTube channel so they could see it and know that I put it out to the world, to everybody to see. So um, if you guys want to also congratulate them, that would be really cool because they're, they're, um, of middle school age and they would uh, totally love that but uh, they did a really good job I go to worlds in uh, Little Rock Arkansas and watch them every year and they really kick butt so I'm really proud of you both I love you both so much and um, I heard you guys bought a lot of stuff that might not make it back on the plane and you guys are spoiled brats and stop getting your parents to buy you stuff so um, anyways on with the rest of the video now um, I um, was trying to decide what to make today's video about because as you know, um, I tend to ramble on about multiple subjects and um, I recently posted, sorry, my shirt is riding up the back and it's like a reverse wedgie um, and I uh, asked my friends on Facebook and I came back with, with some good feedback and one of them was that my videos are too long, which I need to put... Oh, it's too late. Dang it. Um, no, there's the counter. Never mind. I, my videos are too long. Sorry, I'm using a different app. Um, so I, I was afraid I couldn't tell how long the video was. So they said try to cut it down to half an hour because 45 minutes is too long. So I will definitely keep an eye on that and to try to have a list so I don't ramble on. But I find that my rambling on is quite charming. So I can't, I can't guarantee you that, Paul. Um, I will probably keep doing that because that's what I do. And, um, um, yeah, I can't help it. I am talking about a trip to Cozumel and then I'll think about, you know, a taxi. Because, like, we had a cranky taxi ride when we were in Cozumel. And then I'll think about a ride in a taxi when I lived in Chicago. And then I'll start talking about Chicago. And then, once I'm done with that story, then I'll go back to the time in Cozumel because I finished that story. That's just how my brain works and I can't help it. So, um, having a list of things I want to talk about is impossible because I'm not in speech class. We need some light. That, did that do anything? There isn't one up there, I know. I don't have one in my car either. And I was trying to do a video and it got pitch black. Do you guys remember that video? I was still talking. The sun's kind of gone down so I can, you guys can see my eyeballs. Um, I don't, like, I'm not like um, one of those douchebags who is like um, a bro. You know, a bro, like they wear shirts that say like, do you even lift? You know, stuff like that. Like I'm working out now, but like I won't become one of those. Although I did buy a t-shirt that um, is a lifting shirt, but it's um, uh, from a cartoon that I, a cartoonist that I follow on Facebook, and it's called Strange Planets. I don't know if you've seen the cartoons, but it's about aliens doing Earth things and explaining them in um, over-explained ways. Um, so it's really funny, and if you haven't seen it, look up Strange Planet on Facebook. The cartoonist's name is Nathan Pyle, but I bought one of his shirts, and it's about working out, and it says, no exert, or 
No exertion. No. Oh, now I have to look it up. No exertion, no expansion. Yeah, that's what it says. So instead of no pain, no gain, and it's a picture of someone trying to lift weights and they are not, it's like a lot of weight and they're not getting it and the other person is trying to help them and the other person is saying no expansion or no exertion, no expansion. And the other person is like really struggling. So I got a tank top to wear to the gym that said that. Because I've, I've been wanting some new silly shirts and I uh, pride myself on having awesome silly shirts and people tend to love my silly shirts. My mom hates them. Um, she, um, well, the shirt that she really hates is this, um, kind of sheer shirt. It's kind of like a cream and I always wear tank tops underneath it or else you can see all my tattoos. And, um, she it got holes in the elbows. Like there was like tiny holes and she sewed them up for me. And she was like, it's a sign you need to stop wearing it. And then I was at my sister's house and her huskies jumped up on me and they they caught the elbows and the, the, uh, both elbows. I don't know how they got both elbows, but like a huge hole tore. And so while I was there, I was like, well, shit, there's no way of hiding this. So I took a pair of scissors and just cut holes all over it and kind of ripped them. So it looks like it's supposed to be that way. Well, that made my mom hate the shirt even worse. So every time I wear it, I mean, I, I every time I wear it, she's just like, you're wearing that shirt to piss me off. So this last time that she did my laundry because she won't let me do my own laundry. Um, like I'm serious. Like I know I should do my own laundry. And sometimes I try and she's like, I'll just do it. She did my laundry and I couldn't find the shirt. I thought she had finally thrown it away. Well, she buried it underneath other laundry of mine that I had folded yet. Cause why fold laundry if you're just going to wear it? Um, and it was under laundry from like three laundries ago. She hid it from me. So I was mad and I was already ticked off at her about something. I don't even remember what. So I brought it along on the trip. Don't tell her I did this. I brought it along on the trip just to piss her off. And so whenever I put it on, she goes, you found that shirt. Oh, <laughs> I hid it from you on purpose. I was like, I know you did. I didn't say this, but I was like, I know you did. And that's why I brought it. So, um, but she hates, she hates my childish shirts and I like wearing them because they are very me. Um, I have a lot of really nice shirts that an ex got for me. I, I can look very nice and very spiffy and very elegant, but, um, I save those for things like dates and nice dinners and Christmas and Thanksgiving because, you know, I don't need to always be dressed up. Like it's not. It's not a requirement for me. It's, I'm not saying it's not me, because it is. I like looking nice a lot, but I guess part of it is for me, I have no one to look nice for, so why? Like, if I think if I had a boyfriend, I would sometimes dress nice just to, just to look nice on special days, but I like the silly stuff. It's very me, and I know a lot, I know people older than me who have their shit together that wear shirts like what I wear. And so I, that I don't feel bad about it. You know, I can, I can hold my head up high. That gives me some more light. I can hold my head up high wearing a shirt with T-Rexes on it with cats working machine guns and laser beams. And though I am a motherfucking adult and walk around in public. So whenever I wear that one, oh, everybody's like, oh, I love that shirt. <laughs> and Fox, if you're watching, I'm sorry I said m and um, But you're probably not watching because you told me in um, Noni May's stream that you didn't like my cussing. So um, I will um, probably never see you again. And... I imagine that you're probably the one who gave me the thumbs down on my video, and that's okay. I'm not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> but speaking of tea, um, no, I sorry, never mind. Never mind. Um, I do want to share, um, 
I have an idea, and I hope you guys like this idea. I was going to share this in the live stream, but um, I... Um, one, whenever I asked this of my aunt, I started crying yesterday. Um, my grandma, of course, she crocheted. I've mentioned this numerous times. And um, yesterday at the luncheon after the funeral, I went up. It's like people were starting to like take the flowers that, that had been uh, given. And um, I went up and asked her because there was a little memorial to her that, that the family that we had put up, like there was a toothpick because she was always, always after a meal using a toothpick for like 15 minutes. And there was her glasses, the pack of freedom because she always had sugar-free gum. Always. And um, I forget what else. So crossword puzzles, puzzle books. Uh, what else was there, Dad? Her, um, and then a crochet hook and knitting needles remember what else? Her glasses in the glass holder, glasses holder that was by her, uh, her chair. But anyways, I saw the crochet hook and it made me think. I was like, Aunt Carol, can I have one of grandma's crochet hooks? And first I was just thinking for sentimental value. But as I thought about it, I was like, well, maybe I want one that I can actually make something with. Cause I know she had like a baby. She like made doilies and I don't want one that I'd have to make a doily with. But I was like, I would like one that I can make something for my grandpa, something that he could use, and uh, like a stocking cap, because he wears stocking caps to bed, because uh, he's bald, um, balding, um, or shaves his head. Does he just shave his head? Both. Both. Well, that, that gives me lots of hopes for my hair for the future, because they say it's the paternal father that you have to look out. The paternal, or the, the mother's, the mother's paternal father. Um, sorry, I said that wrong. But, um, oh, I'm being so loud. I need to watch my, maybe I need to mess with the microphone. Um, I, uh, where is the sound? Oh, I have it down really low. But it's showing on here that I'm hitting it really loud. Oh, well. Well, you are talking pretty loud. I'll turn it down just a scotch. But I have the window down, so I test, test. Yeah, that's better. Um, but I uh, want to make him something, so it's like they'll make something with her hook and and give it to him. So it would be something that would be like a last gift from her uh, that I make, though. So um, I don't know if you guys think that's a good idea. I ran it by my mom. She thought it was a good idea. I ran it by another friend. And they thought it was a sweet idea. Um, I've never made a hat before, so I'm, uh, I hate working in the round. I know Bag of Day Crochet has a lot of easy, decent uh, stocking caps. Um, so I just... And I don't, he doesn't really do scarves, does he? Yeah, I'd say a scarf would be wasted on him. So it, it basically have to be a stocking cap, so... Um, I think as long as I get a hook that's of a, cause like they've only found two of her hooks. Like they had to search to find a hook for this memorial. So I think I, I would have to, um, make sure I get a hook that's of a workable size. Cause the one that was in there, it, it looked pretty, pretty small. If it was an H, I could do an H. It looks, it looks like it could have been an H. So it depends on what my aunt Carol is willing to let go. Because whenever I asked, it sounded like maybe she wanted Grandma's crochet hook collection. So I asked my mom to ask her to give me one that I could work with. So hopefully they find the rest of her hooks and I get at least a G or an H. Um, an H would be perfect because that's usually what I, I... I say H. I work with a 5 millimeter or a 4 millimeter. Um, those are the two that I like working with the best. Um... When I first started crocheting, I would only work with a J because that's what most of the easy patterns call for. But um, I, just, I just like the tightness that a, that a four or a five um, make. I like, I like my stitches tight and I like them small. Um, and that's the complete opposite of 
how I normally like things. And yes, I'm talking about that. I was just about to vape. I know I'm talking. Oh. Um, I hope you guys have been able to understand me with the window down. I wasn't thinking about that. Um, I'll have to play this back and listen to the whole thing. And if I, if you can't hear, I'll just have to record the whole fucking thing again. It hasn't been too loud. London fog. Um, I um, hit. I didn't just hit a hundred subscribers. I'm at a hundred and thirty-two. I'm so happy. So um, I'll probably, <laughs> I'll more than likely hit two hundred subscribers before I even get the one hundred subscriber giveaway completed. So um, that'll be really awesome. Um, I'm, uh, so I want to give everybody a, a good chance to get entered for the 100 subscriber giveaway. So I'm really excited. So as soon as I get home tonight, um, I will do, I think I'm going to do that because I don't, I don't want to keep on having people skip. Well, I'm, at, I'm on LTE now. Maybe after I finish this video, I'll try to go live again because we're on a good highway right now. Usually when you're on a good highway, your, um, your LTE you're on LTE, right? Yeah, I'm, we've got some good-sized towns coming up. Yeah. So I'm... As long as I'm still on LTE after this, which you're not going to see this video until tonight anyway, so what, what good does this do you knowing this information now? So... It's like... Um, Oh, what was that? Was it Sandra Bullock? I think it was Sandra Bullock. And she was getting letters. Oh, come on. She was getting letters from a man in the in the past or something like that. She lived in the cabin and it was a love story. And she would put letters in the mailbox and it would go to the past or to the future. No, it was to the past. And she would talk to the guy and he like lived in the house at the same in the same cabin or something like that. Can't remember what it was called. I, I'm pretty sure it was Sandra Bullock. And um and she finds out, I think. It's been so long since I've seen it. I can't even remember what it was called, but I'm pretty sure it was Sandra Bullock. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Um if you do, um put it in the comments if you know what movie I'm talking about. Um it might not have been Sandra Bullock. I'm pretty sure it was though. Because I can't think of anybody else. It was a brunette. But, um... But whenever she put the letters in the mailbox, it would it would go to this guy. And whenever he put letters in the mailbox, it would go to her. And they discovered that they were in different years. And I think she finds out that he died. And she wrote a letter and saved him. And he ended up coming to her door. And they ended happy... Oh, sorry. I just ruined the movie. If you wanted to watch it. Never mind. Um, for people who wanted to watch it. If you wanted to. Um, anyway. I don't know what it's called. And it's. Um, anyway. Sandra Bullock. What an actress. Right. I saw the last two minutes of The Blind Side last night. God. I'm so glad she had a comeback. Because. Um. She's such an amazing actress. And I just... I could watch anything that she's in. Even Speed. Even though, I mean... At the time, Speed was an exciting movie. And, like, watching it back now, you're like, what a crap movie. Especially Speed 2. Speed 2? Like, I hate it whenever they do a movie... And they don't get the same actor. And you have to pretend that it's the same actor. Like, they did that in sense um, for season two for, um, uh, the black guy. I can't remember his character name. Um, uh, they did it in, like, Roseanne, the original. They did it with Darlene. You know, it's just like, and, you, and they just ha make the audience sit there and go, oh, yeah, that's the same person. Like, not that the show should end because, you know, the person, whatever the reasons, artistic differences or... Um, whatever, but it's still, like, you have to sit there and go, 
yeah, this is totally the person I've been watching for seasons and seasons. Or, yeah, Keanu Reeves totally got a total facelift and is a lot hotter, but can act. So. Oh, God. I, um, I really feel that my rambling on and on about random stuff is probably a lot more entertaining than having bullet points. Because, um, like I said, it's not speech class. Um, I think in speech competitions, there's called, um, um, oh, what it was it? Exemplative something? Because I, I was on speech team for like two seconds. I went to one competition and there's like things you can do that's like comedy related and we sucked. And after the first competition, like we were out in like two seconds and I was like, this sucks. I'm not going to do it again. Um, but like, but I, I, what was extemporary, extemporary speech where you just have a bunch of stuff that you know, and they'll ask you to speak on a subject and you just go and you just start talking. Extemporaneous. Extemporaneous. Thank you, dad. Extemporaneous. My dad, my dad for the win. Oh, the sun is back out. Where did my sunglasses fall to? Oh, I can't reach them. Oh, my God. Oh. Oh, no. It's, it's going to go back behind the clouds soon. All right. I will have them up here for whenever I need them. If I do. London Fog. And, um, if anybody gets annoyed that I say that, you guys have Noni May, a.k.a. Ma Butter Mama uh, to thank for that. Um, every time, I think it was, it was my first live stream with Derek the Nitwit. Um, no. Yeah, it was my first live stream with him. Um, every time I would vape, she just kept on typing in, typing in the chat, London Fog, like in caps. And it, it tickled me pink. So every time I vape, I have to I have to say London Fog, sing it or, or say it um, like I'm a, um, a, a radio DJ. Coming back to the London Fog on 79.7. Or it could be easy listening. You're listening to the London Fog on 79.7, KEZK. Although London Fog doesn't sound like an easy listening station. Um, classical. Classical, you think? Classical. And you're listening to uh, the London Fog. Here we listen to Bach and uh, Beethoven all day long. Yep. London Fog would be the name of a um, of a host on NPR. Welcome back to NPR. I'm your host, London Fogg. They all have weird names. Do you guys ever listen to NPR? Like, I'm your host, Clabberbass Cumberbottom. Like, I think that's the requirement. They probably make you change your name if you become a host for a show. Pulled out of a hand. That when you come for a show, they're like, all right, your name is Anthony Smith. No, that's not going to work. We're going to change it to Smith, Smithany Clasp. Smithany Clasp. That's your name now. That's a good name. I just came up with that. Like, I, uh, And it probably is the name of um, a host on... I, I, I Google it. Smithany. S-M-I-T-H-O-N-Y Clasp. C L A S P E, clasp. I dare you. Um. Oh my God. So. Um, I have missed going to meetings. I just need to say that I tried to do an online meeting um, while I was away, and. On intherooms.com, which is an online uh, recovery uh, community, um, they used to have 
an AA meeting every hour. And they've changed that. I don't know if they were just ill um, attended until they lowered it or what, but I was going to do one at 7 p.m. because it was 6.30 when I decided to do it. And I logged on at 6.45 and there wasn't one until 9 p.m. And so I was like, okay. And then come 8 o'clock or come 7.30, I was like, I am so fucking tired. So I laid down on the couch and I, like, I dozed off and I kind of like was semi-conscious and I heard my Uncle Ed and my Aunt Terry talking. I was like, what's going on? And we get back to the hotel and it was not even 9 o'clock yet. And I was like, there's no way I'm going to make it through an hour of a meeting. So I didn't, I didn't try. And after that, we were so busy at night and I was doing this stuff during times I could have been doing it. And no offense to AA, especially the, like an online meeting is not the same as going to a home group. A home group, I feel, is a lot better community than sitting through with strangers that you don't know. You don't get as much out of it. Uh, when you're with people that you know, um, there's the better sense of community. So I, I am in a good place in my recovery that going a couple days without hearing the introductory stuff and then hearing about other people's stories for a couple days isn't going to knock me off my rung of where I'm at. So it was just, um, it wasn't in the hierarchy of this is what I need to be doing right this second. Could I have fit it in? Probably. And it's, it's okay. It's not going to come back and bite me in the ass. I'm in a really good and safe place. I haven't felt like using, I haven't felt like drinking even in the midst of my grandmother's death. So, um, I talked to my sponsor about it and he's completely fine. He's like, as long as you feel okay not going, then that's totally fine. He's like, you've been going every day since you've gotten out. And on days that you haven't gone, there's other days that you've gone twice. I've, I've probably even, like I've gone to so many meetings since I've gotten out. I'm still in the parameters of a 90 and 90 having missed these five days. So I, I am, you know, on schedule for, or on, on schedule for, you know, the 90 and 90, which I'm going to go longer than 90 days for, um, for going every day. I'm going to go, hell, I might even go a year. I've been an addict for 15 years, over 15 years. So, um, it was me. Um, I, I'll go until I feel ready that I can go less. Hell, I might go over a year. Um, there's people who have three years who go every day. Um, I really like the people that I go with. So, um, you know, there might be meetings that I miss because there's, there's one on Sunday about the 11th step that I fucking hate. Um, and I'm, I'm going, once I've been there a little bit longer, I'm going to, um, do my best to try to get them to switch it to something else. It doesn't have to be an open discussion, but it'd be nice if we could just switch it to something else. Um, but my sponsor said there's someone who is a long time member of, um, the group who started it and he loves it, but he never fucking goes. So if I go to move to change it to something else and he pipes up that he doesn't want it changed, I am not going to be so shy as to say, then why don't you fucking go? Because <laughs> it's really annoying that there's, of, of the core people who go every day, almost every day, um, against the core membership of the home group, there's like six of us, six to eight of us who go every day. And then on the open discussion Days, which are Fridays, Saturdays, and Mondays, those will have like 20 to 25 people. Um, except for Saturdays, because there's two open discussion meetings on Saturdays. The first Saturday will have 10 to 12. The second one will have 10 to 12. So that that, that, that gets split up. But, um, but all, all the rest of the meetings are hit or miss. There might be six to seven. There might be 15. So the fact that the 11th step meeting, um, 
is so, one, it's boring. There's only so many ways that you can talk about prayer and meditation. And for people who go to it every Sunday, um, that's their church. Well, it's not that, but you can, you can only say, yeah, I, I pray and yeah. meditate. You can only say that. that no, but that's their church. But you can only say so much about it. Yeah. So you just repeat the same shit every week, Dan. I know. <laughs> that's their church. But, but for those of us who are the same people who go every week, it just gets boring to be like, yes, yep, I pray. And for, my shares are always the same every week. I go, yeah. yep, I pray. I used to not pray. I used to not have a higher power, but now I pray yeah. and I can't meditate because I have ADHD, yeah. but yeah. I'm practicing on it. You know, it's just frustrating. So it's, I'm, after I have a few more months under my belt and I'm going to be able, uh, so bold as to try to bring it up that we at least revamp it or make it like a 10th and 11th, 12th step or something or make it where it's in a meditation um, meeting or something where we sit and meditate or something. Something where we just don't talk about the 11th step because that gets, it's boring. I've only been going two months and I'm bored and Jared has been going for years and they've, they've, it's, it's been the 11th step meeting for years. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. all right. I see him over 30 minutes. Um, I will go ahead and stop it there. So my Facebook friends don't get bored with me and can sit and watch the whole thing. Um, I want to appreciate everybody for, um, tuning in today. I would like to ask everybody to, uh, like share and subscribe. I have hit my uh, goal of 100 subscribers. So I will be doing my first giveaway video this week. Um, I will be doing, um, a, well, if I do my live now, I might do a short live again tonight so I can, um, um, well, I'll talk about that in the live here shortly. So that's, this is all moot cause you're not going to see this until tonight. Um, anyways, well, let me see if I still have LTE. I might post this now, uh, from my, from my computer and see if it works. Anyways, uh, like share and subscribe and, um, love each other. Uh, do something good for someone else today. Uh, you won't regret it. And um, be, uh, be kind to those you love and say I love you to them because you never know if it's the last time that you might um, have a chance to. All right. Bye-bye.